gonna quickly wash my hands. Hello there, sir. My name is Khalil Sekh, I'm one of the junior doctors here. So can I just double check your name and date of birth, please? Yes, it's Sir Med Mesa, and I was born 28th February 1992. And how old would that make you, Mr. Mesa? Uh, 24. 24, it's a pleasure to meet you. Okay. So what I'd like to do today is an abdominal examination. Have you ever had one of these done before? Uh, I have. Okay, so you know it would just involve me having a quick look at your hands, your face, your tummy, and also having a feel of your tummy and a listen to it with my stethoscope. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Okay, good stuff. Ideally to begin, the patient should be placed at a 45 degree angle. This should be changed to supine immediately prior to commencing abdominal inspection. Um, just to check before we start, are you in any pain or discomfort whatsoever? Okay, good. Um, also, one other thing to mention is that throughout the examination, I'll be speaking to my colleague here just to relay my findings as I go along. Um, I will be using some medical jargon, so if you have any questions at all, please do feel free to ask. Okay, so starting off at the end of the bed on general inspection, I'm looking around the room for any clues around the bedside, such as uh, pots of medication or drip stands, TPN, things like that. Um, the first thing to note on Mr. Merza himself on observation is that he appears comfortable, calm and well at rest. If abdominal distension is present in this station, organomegaly, including that due to hepatosplenomegaly and autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or an abdominal mass, or chronic liver disease with ascites are the most likely diagnoses. If pallor is present, ascites is far less likely. If the patient is young with a stoma, Inflammatory bowel disease is the most likely diagnosis. Okay, so moving on to the hands now. Okay, could you pop your hands out? Okay. So I'm looking for any coily nicky or leuka nicky in the nails, or any signs of clubbing and um, expansion of the distal phalanx. Okay, um, but I can't see anything of note. Okay, can you pop your hands over for me, please? Okay, I'm looking for any palmar erythema or Jupiter's contracture, but there are no signs. Okay, could you? Pop your hands back like that. Ideally, I'd hold this position for 30 seconds to look for a, tra a flapping tremor that would indicate liver disease. But that's okay. Okay, just relax your other arm by your side. And there's a regular pulse. I'm checking the pulse as part of an abdominal examination because if the patient had an irregularly irregular pulse, it could indicate atrial fibrillation secondary to phyrotoxicosis. Okay, so also in the arms, um, I'm looking for any AV fistulas. If the patient has an arteriovenous fistula, palpate it for a thrill. If a thrill is not present, this indicates that it is no longer active and the patient's end-stage renal disease has been treated with a renal transplant. A patient with a fistula should always be assessed for the presence of a renal transplant in the lower abdomen. So IVDU track marks. Okay, I can't see anything of note. Okay, so I'm just going to look in your eyes now. Okay, so I'm just going to pull down very gently on your eyelids. Okay, can you look up for me? Okay, so I'm looking for any corneal arcus, scleral ictrus, but I can't see anything. Okay, so also just on general inspection of the face, I'm looking for any Cushingoid appearance that might indicate long-term steroid use or swollen parotid glands. Okay, could you pop your mouth open for me, please? Stick your tongue out and raise your tongue up in the air. Okay, so I'm looking for any central cyanosis, angular stomatitis, and just keep your mouth wide open for me, please. And I'm looking for any aphus ulcers that may be a sign of inflammatory bowel disease. But I can't see anything of note. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, so I'm just going to, if you could just pop your arms by your sides. Okay, so I'm just getting moving on to inspection of the tummy now. So I'm looking for any scars from previous surgery, making sure I look on both sides. And, or any signs such as kaput medusae, or bruising, or kidney transplants, or such like. Okay, so I'm just going to start up on general palpation. Have you got any pain in your tummy whatsoever? No. Okay. So starting off on light palpation and looking at the patient's face to assess if I'm causing any him causing him any discomfort. Okay, then moving on to deep palpation. The abdomen is soft, non-tender with no palpable masses. Okay. So I'm just going to try to palpate for your liver now. Okay. So you take some deep breaths. And now for your spleen, take some deep breaths.
Okay, it's going to block the kidneys. And feel free, feel free to um, a blood vessel in your tummy. And there's no palpable abdominal aortic like aneurysm. Okay. So I'm just going to percuss, just do some tapping on your chest. Okay, so I'm just going to percuss the liver boundaries. Now the spleen. Okay. And also we're going to test for shifting dullness. Okay, could you roll towards me? I would then hold this position for 10 seconds. Sorry about this. No. Okay, and then I'm going to cast down. And there's no shifting goal. You can relax back now. Okay, so finally, if you could just lean forward for me, please, and grab your ankles. Okay, I'm just going to feel in your neck with some lymph nodes. So, submental. Submandibular, preauricular, postauricular, anterior cervical chain, posterior cervical chain, and occipital, and then also supraclavicular, looking for a pan, looking for indication of a pancreas tumor. That's all okay. You can relax back now. So I'm also going to be looking in the shins. So feeling palpating for any peripheral edema that may indicate liver disease. There's nothing of note. I'm also looking on the shins for pyoderma gangrenosum or any other peripheral signs. There's nothing of note. That completes the examination. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Merza. I'm just going to wash my hands at the end of the procedure. Would you like me to present my findings? Thank you. So today I examined Mr. Merza, 24-year-old male, who appeared calm, comfortable, and well at rest. Um, there were no peripheral stigmata. On inspection of the abdomen, there were no scars from previous surgery. On palpation, there was no hepatosplenomegaly. Um, the abdomen was soft, non-tender, with no palpable masses. To complete my investigations, I'd like to take a full history, and particularly eliciting how any symptoms were impacting upon my patient's quality of life. I'd also like to do a PR exam and a routine set of bloods, uh, particularly U's and E's. Um, could also do, if indicated, PSA. Um, scans that I could order, if indicated, would be an abdominal x-ray um, or a, an abdominal ultrasound. Um, another test I could do by the bedside as a routine matter, of course, is a urine dip. Uh, that completes. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to ask, what features would help you to distinguish between palpating a spleen versus a kidney? Okay. So the first thing is that a kidney is quite smooth and it also has a notch. Whereas um, a kidney, if you could feel one, would likely to be um, a result of polycystic kidney disease. So it'd be quite knobbly and not smooth. Also, a spleen would move diagonally and in a superficial pattern, sort of like this. Whereas a kidney would move deep and vertically um, as the patient breathed in and out. Another thing would, another difference would be that the the opposite kidney would likely also have polycystic, it would have cysts, and so be palpable. Um, in addition, you can get, it's more likely that you can get under a spleen when you're palpating, whereas with a kidney you can't do this. Okay, thank you.